Al Goodell from Goodell Farms. My family's been farming on the North Fork for over 100 years, but uh, I took a little sabbatical in the construction business and have come back to uh, start farming, learning from my father, and uh, trying to bring all natural products and produce to the people in North Fork in all facets from honey to jams and jellies to meats, cheeses, dairy, vegetables, poultry, eggs, a little bit of everything. The stand we have right now is self-serve. It's, it's open all the time. <laughs> the light's on and there's a cash box in there. And hopefully this spring we'll be open with regular hours, probably uh, Wednesday to Monday. To 10, 10 to 6 or something like that. And we'll always stay self-serve. So you, you've been doing this your whole life? Yeah. We started, well, we started, we always did it as kids, and then, like I said, we came back and started doing it again, and it kind of just snowballed from doing some jams and jellies to salsas to into the honey, the sauerkrauts, and then that brought it into the vegetables. And we try to stay as close to... We're not organic, but we, you know, we fertilize with manure. We don't use all the chemicals, and we try to keep it as natural as possible with, with everything that we do. Okay. So, so I'm doing it for my family, and it's been a lot of interest. And we keep keep trying to make it grow. And Thank you. Keep up the good work. Thanks. It's wonderful. <laughs> Have you done this your whole life? Um, since I was about six years old, because it's the people that we know or now, you know, friends, family, it just works on the honor system, everybody that comes in and, and buys something for now. Uh, it's just, we don't have somebody at a register, but there's a price list, and then there's mixed chain in the bag, whatever they come and buy, they buy, and just, Take their change out of the back. Blackberry, uh, apple pie change. Raspberry, this was a good crop this year. Apple butter, that came out very good too. Who does all the canning? Uh, my brother, my father, and I. Usually do it over in the kitchen up there or back at the barn because we make our own homemade pickles. He makes the bread and butter, he makes uh, southern lime and uh, just the extra sour pickles. How many chickens do yeah. you have to make all these eggs? Uh, we got over 400 now. Wow. They're over at the 4-H camp. They were here, but we had a problem with raccoons. Yeah, we were just, they were just eating them. Eating them. Like it was bad. They got bad, so we found like a new place for them while he, and right now we're in the middle of just trying to make it more of a safe haven for them to bring it back. They're safe over there now. And they're doing well over there, so they're producing pretty well over there. We're going to have raw milk for sale. We're going to have cheese and yogurt. Oh, that's right. Basically goat. Basically goat. Girls are trying to talk me into getting a couple of cows, so might, might go that way. Not everybody likes uh, goat milk. So. We're applying for a licensing now to the state of New York. To in the spring, we'll offer raw milk and processed milk, which will be pasteurized milk and cheese. and yogurts and, and those type of products that hopefully we'll have available first of May and then somewhere around there. A little bit more construction and uh, inspections. And how many dairy farms are there on Long Island? There's, right now there's two. There's Catapano in Greenport and there's one in Bridgehampton that's a cow, a cow dairy. Um, so we'll be the third and we'll be the only, should be the only one offering milk for sale, pasture. And what will be different about your milk compared to the milk that people get in the grocery stores? 
<laughs> um, fresh. It's fresh. It's right here. It's coming right from we that pasteurized, which is a, a lower temperature pasteurization. So it pasteurizes at about 150 degrees for uh, 30 minutes. Where a lot of people they they uh, it's like super pasteurized. They pasteurize it like 200 or even higher, where it pasteurizes in the tube, and it, at that temperature, you're killing everything in the milk where at, at the temperature where you're leaving some of the good organisms and those type of things that are that are important to have nutrient wise. And we have a big customer base that wants raw milk. So the licensing for that is a little bit different. You get tested a lot more often for, to make sure the quality is there. And that there's no disease or bacteria that counts in there. And actually raw milk you can't bottle. You have to if you sell raw milk, I have to I milk the cow or the goat, and the milk goes from there into um, a cooler, and it's in a, in a bulk tank. And the person has to come to the farm with their own jug, and we fill it off the bulk tank, and then take it home. So we can't we can't bottle it and put it on the shelf and have it for sale. They have to come to the farm and pick it up in their own bottle. I have a couple local doctors that are you know, natural. And, that stuff and they refer a lot of people over there. So we have a waiting list right now for people because we have a license for raw milk. Oh really? So you can get it. To be able to bring their jug. Yep. Yeah. And that pet for raw milk, raw milk fresh on a dip thing. Fifteen dollars a gallon. Wow, it was we started making jams and jellies and then salsas and then I went to Cornell and took a class on processed foods and all the requirements and the schedule processes on how to do that and took the next step of getting the kitchen approved to make the stuff in and we did that then it was just little by little we went from out of construction and into <laughs> from, from easy job to a harder job actually but it's it's fun and it's the kids one of the main reasons I do is my kids love it they they like milk and goats they like the chickens they like all the animals they like getting into it and uh, it's nice to get them off the bus and have them work on the farm. Hopefully they will grow into it. Yeah, that's great. It's fun. They're, they're, uh, they look happy. Yeah, it's like <laughs> in school they had a thing on, um, you know, how, how's your Thanksgiving go or prepare, prepare the turkey? And you know, the one writes, you know, my dad goes outside and gets the turkey and kills it and brings it inside. <laughs> and the other one says she's thankful, you know, for the turkey because we get to eat it and don't have to pay for it. <laughs> they definitely have a concept of what's going on. With them. That's great. They, go to, they were you know, show and tell or whatever. The other weekend we went upstate and they're uh, they said, oh we're going upstate, we're going upstate. And the teacher said, what are we going, what are you going upstate for? Oh we're bringing the goats up to get bread. Oh. <laughs> it's in first grade. So it's, not that they know what it means but right. you know they know that we're That's what you're doing. There. That they're going up so that they can have babies so that they can have milk again. All this processed food. Yeah. You, know, you take a, a fresh ham, it's, it's white. It's not red, it's not pink. pink. Yeah. Preservatives and all this stuff. It's not what, what I'm not what I think you're supposed to eat. And the same thing with a, a chicken that sits in a cage and just pops of eggs because he's getting all these supplements and everything added to him. He's not, if he's out there in the sun and doing even, what he's supposed to be doing. Cows and cattle, not supposed to be next to an ethanol plant eating the byproducts of what we're putting in our fuel and never see the light of day they're supposed to be out eating green grass yeah and i mean that, that's what the people used to eat and now it's come away from that that's what i want to bring it back to the, the way it was in the 50s and 60s with the, with the stuff that would be 50 or 100 people that come to us because they want fresh whole milk they want fresh cheeses they want the vegetables the honey the jams yeah, right. that, they, that they know and eventually we have another building over there where we Put up on our website or Facebook that this is what we're doing this Saturday. Come on, if you want to make your sauerkraut or spin the honey, come do it. Buy a, a small colony called a nook if you're starting out, and it's, it comes in a box about about this big and there's about 20,000 bees in there with the queen. Yeah, they, it's uh, working. You put them in a 
in the box like this. My grip is working. Just kind of dump them in. Yeah. The queen comes in a little cage. It's got a little piece of wax on the bottom. So you hang her in between in the cage. And then you just open that thing up. Shake them in there and put the top on it. It takes about a day and they'll eat that wax. <coughs> oh, to get the queen out. Get the queen out and then... Where do you get them from? The place I get them from, they, they, they overnight them from California. Mm. There's some places upstate and stuff you can get them. They seem to be, I've had the most luck with them. Why is there a certain type of bee you get from there? There's, there's three or four different types of bees. We, we mix it up a little bit, but they just always seem to have the best price. Beast you have in your hive. Each hive has two hundred. More than that. It's hundred thousand. Is it one queen for all the? One queen, and then you have the type to go out and fly around. The one type, and then there's another type that just uh, stay, stay in, stay in and build all this. What is that that you're taking off? That's the. Like a wax. They, they build a comb and then they cap it. With the wax, the comb, it's all wax, and they, they cap it. In. So when you put that in there, that frame is just empty. It's just a yeah. square. It looks like before. But so you have the, it has the little, the little, octa little octagon, octagon just a little they? pad. It's, okay. You know, that gives and then them they the build all this out. You know, this all, it's all huh. wax. Can I smack? Go ahead. We got some honey. It's, it's just, it's cold. It's cold. Bring our way up. Look at how much already. Why is it all sticking to the side? It's cold. Is it warm enough? It's so cold. Careful. difference in the color of the honey too so they must have found a different flower or plant to get that from. What is the white That's the wax. Like you can make candles on it. Yep. Yeah, you guys probably will this year. Make some stuff out of this stuff out of this wax. Wow. So this has been spun out? 
They were in there taking it back. Out. Oh yeah, you still went inside for half <laughs> yeah. dinner and they didn't play no games. Came back out and it was probably fifty thousand bees in the garage. Oh my god! <laughs> he is humming in the sun. I mean, it looks ugly. You can see it looks brown and yellow, but what it does, it makes it so this is white. If you pick it green, this will all be crisp and it'll green. Your uh, sauerkraut will have a greenish tint to it. But like last year, we let it go for like a like a, a four or five weeks. When you peel this back, your, your cabbage is nice and white. It makes your sauerkraut very white, but you gotta let the cabbage age. So that just sits in that wheelbarrow from sets there. So it's been in the barn here for like four weeks now. Yeah. Huh. They sit there like that. That's all. But like I said, it just matter. It's just back there. And Doesn't it looked like when we first got out last year, we had a friend Matt here, and he says, you can't play sauerkraut. Because oh. it was some rotten yeah. leaves on top, we peeled it all back. And, Came it's out beautiful. the beautiful Christmas stuff. Yeah. You can't sit down here and watch me. Do you want to tell me about your secret sauerkraut? <laughs> I just uh, cut the cabbage and let it sit for probably a month or so dries out and it's nice and you know, to be dry and white like this. And then as you have to slice it and put it in the and you put layers, a little salt and seasoning. You put some apples and uh, carrots in there. And you, you press it, you just press it. You keep pressing, pressing, pressing until you get water. And then you keep doing layers and you press until you get water. And all the way to the top. You you can top, you push, and you have water come up. And then uh, put a cover on it. How long does it sit? Depending on the temperature, 10 to 12 days. You know what I mean? It wants to be whatever. It, it goes and it starts bubbling. It foams all around the, the top. It foams, and then uh, once all of a sudden, what, it, what they call pop, there's water and it's foaming, and all of a sudden it'll disappear. It'll all go back into the cabbage. Do you keep adding the cabbage to it and yeah. pushing it down? Yeah. As you get water, you put more on top. When you get there, the first batch will be big. You'll probably go, it'll look like it's like a quarter of this crop, but you get done pushing it down, it'll be like this much in the bottom. Oh, wow. So you keep pushing it down, pushing it down, and then you put, like I say, a lot of layer of salt, uh, caraway seeds, or whatever he's got there, and apples. And, I mean, you can put what you want with fruit and stuff. It makes right. a difference. And then, uh, you know, you keep going. Keep working, keep working, stacking, working. And stacking, keep stacking and stacking and stacking. You'd be surprised. That wheelbarrow being in, in this crop probably would be three quarters full. Really? Yeah. Huh. Then we get done. That's amazing. Hey. A, lot, a lot of cat. 30, 30, 30, almost three dozen heads will go in that damn thing. Wow. It smells good. Yeah, look at that. Can I do that? What is that? Salt and. Salt and caraway seeds. Mm -hmm. Is the liquid coming to the top already? It's getting there, starting to. When do you um, start to put the carrots and the apples in the 
miscellaneous so you like once we put like a, a batch of cabbage in. But, uh, yeah, just sporadically. Give it a quick push. Not many people do it anymore. Horse radish with the to keep keep the tradition going. And it's different than any sour crab you can get in the store. Right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Pick them up whenever we can. <laughs> Yeah, you gotta get water now. By now, you gotta, it's time you gotta get it. Put a little more salt on whatever you gotta do. If you gotta do it again, you put a, a, a thin layer on. You do it again until you get water now. You fuck up. Yeah. 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 The jugs, and you want it to stay like this so it, the, oh, the water doesn't stay there. Yeah. Doesn't get like brown, yeah, okay. so it'll all stay yeah. white. So it's like anything. A lot of times you keep that. And you'll see. A couple of days, this will start. will start foaming up around right here. And stuff that kind will of right. raise up and kind of pop. And it'll all go back down. And suck it. And so when you finish, when this part down like half, yeah. what's in here? Yeah. 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 Just, just a little bit. Yeah, then we, then we, yeah. 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 Two we put down in it. Yeah. Pour some cider yeah. vinegar and stuff yeah. in there that gives it a different flavor. Okay. So it's just funny because I know a lot of times when your dad's doing something, all of a sudden you know you did something that big, and next thing you know it's only like this. Cucumber. Yeah, right? Yeah. Sweat them. Sweat them. Yes, we sweat, yeah. we sweat, which is with a saw. Yeah. And it was like half or, or less than half. Yeah. And I was like, wait, where did it all go? Water out now. Yeah, so, but this one, only a little bit. Over there, you have to stay you don't have the doors or whatever. Nice. One year I had my... No, that's no. for weight to keep it's the just weight. Just so on. see how this stays on the sides here? Mm-hmm. You do this, if you not, you put another one on. When you do it and it sets it, it should keep... The water should stay there. If it don't stay there in a little while, you put another gallon on. That way it just keeps all the water even so you don't get any of the brown stuff around it. This is what you happens. Leave it out here in the morning, yes? you say? No, they'll probably take it over to the kitchen over here later. Okay. Tomorrow, whatever. Well, it's good on wheels, yeah. so. Yeah. on wheels, I think. Yeah. To your right, Dan, it was sitting on that corner right there. We just find a, a nice, clean... <laughs> uh, table cloth or something put over just so no surprise on you. Yeah. Oh, 
Wow, someone put the geese, those regular geese oh, here? just started bringing geese here. <laughs> and leaving them. saying it. like, oh, I need a home for the geese. Wow, what and fancy looking geese. I was geese. like, okay. That's good. But they get mad. I think so. Thank you. 